age. A lot of young people right here, especially on Twitter, they, they want to get married immediately. They, 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 they can't wait to get married. So, uh, are you going to be the beneficiary of the first million? You'll have a couple very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Did you listen to the hot breakfast this morning? Here's what you missed. Week after he endorsed uh, ODM leader Raila Odinga for his presidency. So Governor uh, Alfred Mutua of Machakos County is officially running for president and he has um, a 14 pillar uh, manifesto. Everything from quality of life to political pillar and ideology as his manifesto. He's joining us live in the studios this morning. There's so much to talk about. I'm sure, Nick, you have your own little side questions on to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Governor Alfred Mutua, welcome to Hot 96. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here. It's good to see you guys always looking so happy. Yes. I don't know what they give you in the morning or maybe what they give you in the middle no, of the night. They just promised us our but, salary uh, on time at the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this end of the month will change my manifesto because when I become the president of this country, I'm mm -hmm. um, going to mandate that salaries be paid twice a month. Uh, salaries need to be paid twice a month. That's the international standard. Because you find that in this country, people are always broke by the 10th, 11th, 12th. They're asking for advance. Uh, an advance. And also it lowers the circulation of money if money is only available once a month at the end of the month for a few days. We need money to circulate so the economy can grow faster. It's called broadening the base. So when you pay people their salary twice, you know, divided into two, people are able better to plan better. Yeah, people are able to plan better. You know, they can take care of the problems that arise in the middle of the month. Mtoto antaka kiatu, mtumahi ya shule. You are able to move your life. You are not always begging. Mm. Oh, that and sounds you, good, Governor. If, if, you ask, if yeah. you ask a lot of people, they tell you that uh, people are always asking for money in the how, middle of the month. How is that going to be possible? How do you tell employers to pay people twice a month? Everything is all habitual, you know, because now the good thing is that salaries are mostly paid in most companies, in most institutions. People get their salaries paid either through M-Pesa or they are paid through their bank accounts or other, you know, other systems. So it's very just about dividing. It's just, it's an accounting thing. It's a habit that you need to form. And government takes the lead. If government starts doing it, then the rest of the private sector will do it. All right. Before we come to your manifesto, last week you and um, alongside your Ukambani governors, that's uh, Professor Kivuta Kibwana, Charity Gilo, you endorsed ODM leader Raila Odinga as the next president. No, we did not. What did you do? We... We supported the Azimio Lomoja movement that is going on. Mm -hmm. And he came and the railer himself is saying he's not declared his running. He came and uh, we talked about the Azimio Lomoja bringing people together. He's done this. We even in Malindi, we talked about Azimio Lomoja. So we're talking about how many people can come together to ensure that Kenya is stable as we go forth. You there's, said no, there's no there's no endorsement. We oh. said we believe and we support the movement that Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta have put together so that you can take this country to a stable place whereby politics are not about where you are born. Politics are not about who your father was. Politics are not about, you know, uh, your, your color or your gender. Politics are about what you can do for your country so that every child born has an opportunity. That's all we care about. Will you be at the Kasarani Stadium on Friday? That, is, that is my intention because we have to be consistent and support the Azimio uh, and support what we stand for. If I'm around, I'm traveling in Kidogo, mm -hmm. but I'll try to make it back on time because it is, it is essential that we stick together to have a movement that says that the children of this country are also important. It is not a country for just a select few. What if Raila Odinga declares on Friday that he's running for president? Will you support that? That's okay. I, I, you know, he, I, I'll call for him to also support me. We saw Raila Odinga attend the WIPA meeting where Kalonzo Musioko was declared the presidential candidate. Nobody had a problem with that. You know, people are not asking Raila. Now you went there, there was a meeting, Kalonzo was declared by WIPA to be presidential candidate. Are you still running also? Are you supporting? No, no. It's important for all of us not to have our dreams constrained just because others are running. Mm. And I, my, my hope is that uh, Ray Loading and others will look around and say, Uyu Kijana Natosha, this is, uh, we need a generation change. We need somebody who has a clue, who knows the, what needs to be done and who has the energy to do it. Somebody who can be trusted, somebody who has uh, an ability to also bring the country together, who is not divisive. Now, yeah. let's go back to when uh, the, the, the terms that you've done. It's now the, you're ending the second term, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, of all the things you promised, 
how far have you gone with all of them? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy. I think that uh, Machakos, we've been very, very lucky. We haven't done as much as we wanted to do because of the flow of cash and other things, but it's good to dream and do many things. But I'm very proud of healthcare. You know, I remember uh, I was telling Jeff Koinange off here a few minutes ago um, about an interview we held, and I was talking about the basics of life, you know, providing ambulances. When I became governor of Machakos, um, there were no ambulances. Kids, you know, there were about four ambulances and two on top of stones. For a whole county of about over 1 million people, 1.2 million people. Mm. Two ambulances. What a shame. You know, I bought eight ambulances, one for every administrative location. Kids have been born, they are, you know, because they were carried by those ambulances to hospitals. Yes. You know, before you find a mkamba working, walking in the street, and I can be a nito amwanzia, a nito amwanzia. He was born by the roadside. Oh, Our well, girl says okay. mm. was born on the roadside. Mm. Now, the registrar of persons talked to me the other day. He said it will be, a big, uh, it will be interesting in Machakos in a few years from now because there are very many kids being born called Alfred Mutua. <laughs> <laughs> because what is happening, you know, you know, in the middle of the night, the father, mother, they called an ambulance. It gets in three to eight minutes. We have the fastest response time in Africa. I think only we are competing with South Africa right now. That's eight, all eight in Machakos. In Machakos County from every corner. Because what we did is we put ambulances strategically placed and we used locals who know where the places are. We even have ambulances of motorcycles to go up the hill to save your life before the other one gets there in case the road is not good. So I was able to do that. The other thing that uh, in Machakos when, when you arrive is that uh, you could smell the placenta of mothers giving birth from about 200 meters from the main hospital it was dirty no water nothing i cleaned that hospital it is the cleanest public hospital in this country and i say that without fear of contradiction go and see it today yourself you know look at that hospital go around we have revolutionized we've built new 10 community hospitals all over uh, in the county we've brought uh healthcare to 190 and in addition to that you know there is a, uh, a disease called cancer you know, and it's become like, uh, you know, when you get cancer and you're rich, what do you do? Go to India. You go to India, you go to South Africa, you go to where and you're treated. If you're poor, what do you do? You die at You home. die. Then they say, we loved you, but, but God loved you more. more. And they wonder, does God just love the poor more than the rich? <laughs> you know, this inequality. So I formed, I'm the only county that has a Machakos, uh, that has a cancer center, cancer care center. I formed it. And it treats people. We do pathology. Uh, we do, uh, you can do your biopsies, and if you have cancer, we get you on a chemotherapy system. We still don't have that, uh, that radiotherapy machine, we're getting it. But you're treating people, we're extending life. We're actually, actually reversing even people who have cancer, because if they're treated early, they would end. Do you know how much it costs? Mm -hmm. You know, cancer treatment is very expensive. Yes. You know, if, if you get cancer and you need to go through a system of chemotherapy, it costs you 10, 15 million shillings. Okay. Who can afford that? In Machakos, we have universal health care. Treatment in my hospitals from maternity to mortuary is 100% free of charge. I've been able to pull that through. People don't pay a penny? You don't pay a penny as long as you come from Machakos County. You don't pay a penny. We've struggled the last six months because of, uh, of uh, money coming from the national government has been late and everything. So it made it very difficult to get the commodities going. But it is possible. In my manifesto, I talk about universal health care. I have tried this for over one year in Machakos. It is working. You know, you find that the health of our people has improved. Parents don't have to choose this or that. And it's not just about providing free health care. It also needs to be quality health care. You know, we're doing brain surgery in Machakos. We are treating people. You know, my doctors are motivated. You know, I have doctors from all over this country working in Machakos. The best, the cream, the cream. I've brought them there to serve my people in the villages. I've added 800 nurses, you know, so that, you know, nurses are very important, as you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud of what I've done for healthcare. More can be done, more will be done. I'm still concentrating on it because that's so when it comes to what I've been able to achieve in my because I think healthcare is one of the great things. You mentioned quality a moment ago and another yes. thing that you, you you pride yourself with is um, road infrastructure, you know, tarmacking roads. But a lot of complaints people saying that the road quality has been pathetic, that it's good for a few weeks and then before you know it it's back to scratch. I think it's, it's propaganda because the system that I'm using uh, throws into this span into work for people who want to eat money. Let me give you an example. When I decided to build a road called Kidimani Makutan Mamwala Road, I called engineers and I asked them, uh, you know, how much will this road cost? They gave me the design, 1.6 billion shillings. 
after three kilometers. I said, wow, very expensive. That was a Kenha design. So I asked him, how long does it take to build a kilometer? They said, you know, governor building a road is not like cooking chapati. You know, it's, it's work. You have to dig, you have to measure the soil, then you have to put uh, uh, what you call a sub-base, maram, stones, you measure, da, 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 all the way to the very top, you pour MC30, you stabilize, you, and then you pour bitumenate, stroke stroke 100, the chippings. You, you make a, 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 normal, a normal road, a good road. So I said, how long does it take? They said, it can take you about a month to build this road. I, uh, a kilometer. I said, you, you can do a kilometer in one month. Yes. So how long does it take to do 33 kilometers? They look like at me as if I was, I'm an idiot. You know? Well, Ksabu, you know, 33 months. One kilometer a month. 33 months. Sindio? Yeah. Like, you know, Ksabu, kuna kwanga na mvua. Money is late. Blah, blah, blah. 36, about four years to do. That's Perfect. a Kenyan style. Like, some that's not chap chap philosophy. You mean people will meet, date, uh, you know, love each other, even breed. And the Barabara in Asia, <laughs> you know, that's a Kenyan system. Four years. Yes. Nikauliza, are you sure you can take a kilometer and finish in one month? They said, yes. That's the international standard. I asked them, can you supervise my road? They said, yes. I divided the road into 11 lots. I had 11 different contractors. Each contractor, I gave them three kilometers to do each kilometer per month. In three months, the road was done to the same standards as the road being done in four years. So when I did that, there was a panic. Hi, can we build a road? In the, yo, Barabara, it ended. Go there today, Jeff. The road is still there. It's as good as any other road built in this country of Kenya. We have to open our minds. We have to stop constraining ourselves to a minimalistic way of thinking and doing things. We have to go there and see the things that we have done. I've built Kivandini Mokton, Kivandini Road, Kakuyoni Road, uh, Mudedeni Road, Adi River Roads, you know? Just because it's done faster, like how they do it in Dubai, in Singapore, in Europe, does not mean that it's bad. But you know, when you do it faster, it costs less. It only cost me 650 million shillings to do, to construct the road that was supposed to cost 1.6 billion shillings. Left me more money to do other things, and the road is still there. Okay. So it's this culture of Kenya where you want to extend things. You say you are, the road was not done well. Why? Because I've cut out the cartels. People did not eat. I cut out the fat. So I could use that money on healthcare, use that money on other areas to help my people of Machakos. Was the cartels, is it like a big thing in Machakos? Because people complain about cartels across the country. No cartels. Is it something that can be brought to an end? Yes, yes. Uh, with my presidency, that ends, Kabisa. Because, you know, it comes down here. Uru Kenyatta, my friend, uh, President Uru Kenyatta, talks about... Uh, Let's, let's do the market rate, let's do market value. You know, I, I got my engineers the other day, uh, we were designing, you know, and uh, some roads. Mm. And I asked them, why is this road costing 70 million a kilometer? 70 million a kilometer, why? So they came with stories, unajua hii, unajua hii, unajua hii. But because I've been doing this road construction, I told them to cut the BS. It was so much fat being added to it, eh, in these BQs. Mm. We were able to cut that road to 25 million a kilometer. And the road was built to the same standards as the 70 million. But money was going for this, money was going for this. So this is called market rate. Is very, so we will go back to saying, if uh, Nick or Jeff, you go to uh, one of the supermarkets and you buy a pen today, and the pen at the supermarket, not wholesale, supermarket, they're making a profit. You buy the pen at 20 shillings. Why is the government buying it at 100 shillings? We should buy it at 10 shillings at wholesale price. That's the problem in this country. We have a lot of money, but the money is being squandered because the so-called market prices are already exaggerated so the rich can continue becoming richer and the poor becoming poorer. As I uh, usually say, this, camp, uh, this country uh, became a country of tenderpreneurs. What is it to Taifanya Nini? Kusema na? Kutenda. Kutendo. Kutendo. You know, kutendo. You know, and you've seen it in the camps, uh, you know, uh, scandals, all these scandals. It's all about making money from government, but the money is not going to a 90. That is why my manifesto is talking about let's widen the base. Let's not make, it, let's, let's make this country for all of us. When you say let's pay people twice a month, let's provide uh, sources of income that will spread. Let's, let's drop the interest rates for mortgages. For how, example, how will that be done? Mm, how? It's very simple. It's very simple. Uh, I, I bought my first home in the U.S. many, many years ago. You know, it was like 0.5% interest rate, 1% interest rate. Australia, you look at the interest rate right now, 0.8, 1%. You know, interest rate. When you have a mortgage, your house is already a surety. There is no loss. The house already is a surety. 
So if you don't pay, they can take the house and sell it. So why does it need to have an interest rate of 15 percent? Your person ended up finding in. Think about it, Jeff. Banks have to make their money. Yeah, they're making the money for the 2%, 1%. If banks are making money in New York, banks are making their money in Washington, D.C., banks are making their money in London, in uh, in Sydney, in Toronto, they're making their money by charging 2%. It's about telling people enough is enough because a mortgage, a home, is a right for everyone. We don't need to be a country of people just suffering. You look at uh, President Uru Kinyari came up with this concept, uh, a pillar, very, very good pillar of affordable housing. But where are the affordable houses? They're in the cities. Majority of Kenyans are in the rural areas. How do you make it easier for people to build in the rural areas? You have to think through it. If you go to Bombay today, or Uttar Pradesh, mm, not, not a problem. Yeah. Not a problem. Okay, Uttar <laughs> Pradesh. Uh, you can get a bag of cement, no, for about 300 shillings for 50 kilograms. When they are building, uh, this Strabag road from uh, at the river going to Kibwezi, mm -hmm. believe that road, you know, they were importing cement from India. It was cheaper to import cement from India. You could not have a lot of cost. You could not have a lot of duty. You could not have a lot of barabara. It is still cheaper than buying cement from at the river just next door in Kenya. So, you know, because, so we have to make sure that, say, so what am, am I doing? I'm removing duty from the cost of uh, raw materials to make cement and making it easier, removing duty for steel and cement for the manufacturers, you know, giving those waivers, uh, and lowering the cost of electricity through my other initiatives of Kenya Power because electricity increases the cost. So that the cost of a bag of cement comes down from 600 to 250 shillings as it is in the United States of America. What does that mean? When you lower steel, you lower cement, you lower all these things, building a house that was going to cost 2 million will only cost 700,000 shillings. There's more homes. That's how you bring affordable housing. So at Ukushago, Urkona Mabati, Unajenga Nyumba Amawe Vizuri, because it is affordable. Your ceiling travels more. Widening the base, bringing all the Kenyans into a middle class system where we all live like human beings. You know, you've uh, mentioned about uh, the taxes on, you know, cement and all that. And I was reading the paper earlier on, you intend to decrease uh, the, what's it called, the income tax, mm -hmm. uh, duty on imports of vehicles. Mm -hmm. I know all this goes in towards the government's, you know, taxes for doing A, B, C, D. How exactly is that going to work? In my manifesto, I have a whole section on how I'm, I'm going to fund this. You see, it's about taking from here and giving from here. My advantage is that I served under President Mwai Kibaki's government. Kibaki is a brilliant economist. You know, we sat down with the late uh, Muraria and a brilliant man, I think one of the brilliant men I've ever met in this country called Francis Mudaura. Mm -hmm. You know, real economics. And we looked at how this country can be stable. Nakumuka Akati Ukwa we are borrowing from overseas. You know, during Kibaki's days, yes. we stopped borrowing. Mm -hmm. We say to Jitegeme. You know, and I'm the, actually the one who came up with that slogan, Kulipo Ushuru, ni kujitegemea. You know, okay. and so I have a history of how this can be done. It's all about balancing the budget properly. When you widen the base, like how they have done it in the UAE, in the UAE, the income tax, do you know how much is income tax in the UAE? Maybe 5% or less? No. Zero. When you work in the UAE, you're charged zero for income tax. There's no pay as you earn. You get your salary 100%. Business tax is 5%. Why can they afford to do that? Because they're not concentrating on just a few people who are paying. It's majority. When I talk about broadening the base, widening the base in my manifesto, it's getting the country moving into a consumer-oriented uh, economics. That's why it's say pay people twice. I've thought through this thing. Then you get a lot of people included in the economic sphere. Then that way, you charge little, but it is spread out. You make more. Umelo. It's a model that was used very well actually by a company, I don't know, you might have heard of it called Royal Media. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. No, no, it's true. Because you look at the, the strategic uh, game that was played by Royal Media mm. was to widen, get as many players possible, small, small players possible, they add on to the center and then amplify. You know, they went to amplification, mm. you know, and you amplify and you make it go wider. That's you can you can see Royal Media stations in Tanzania, in Uganda. You amplify. So it's, it's a technique that has worked in business. That can, it's all about the bottom line. It's the same thing I'm doing for agriculture. Every time it doesn't rain, what happens? We start starving. Mm. Food, let me tell you, starvation is not an issue of lack of food. It's an issue of lack of planning and an issue of lack of money.
first of all, we need to have a circulation of food all the time that is affordable. I have a subsidy program, and this one I'm copying from Malawi. This is not originally mine. I'm copying from what happened in Malawi. Malawi was a starving nation. Mm -hmm. So the president did. He said, let's operate food uh, production like a business. So you see, if you've got one acre, and you have 10 bags of maize during a bumper harvest, and that's enough for you to pay school fees and feed yourself. What if you have two acres or three acres? Then you get 60 bags. When it doesn't rain, you're back to the 10 bags, which you had before. You know, so he brought in a tractor subsidy program. I adopted the same thing in Machakos. When I became governor, Machakos was in the food relief uh, list. We were getting food relief. Kuka Kidogo, Wakambu, Kwa Machakos, on poor food relief. I bought 40 tractors, one for every ward, to expand. You know, they have been just plowing throughout for free, to expand the, the grounds, you know, expand the bottom line. Think like a business. I gave free seeds, subsidized uh, fertilizer. And uh, new, when you give free seeds, you're giving high quality seeds that can be reused with higher yield, subsidized fertilizer, and also provided things like chicken to homes. Because ukiwa na kuku, kukiumana, unachukua kuku moja, unapeleka kule dukani, unauza, unanua unga nayo, unanua a few things, unakuja na chinja ingine, watu wana kula. As a result today, today, of all the counties that have been in that list of food relief, Machakos has been struck out. We are no longer a county that is fed when there is starvation. Because, because of his initiative, but I copy that from Malawi. So, as, so when, when it comes to agriculture, I've said that, why didn't the best? Let's buy silos. Let's have, not buy, but build silos everywhere where we can freeze meat, we can freeze fish, we can freeze chicken, we can have grains lasting three years, a stock of three years, replenishable every year. So, so that if rains fail at any time for a period of three years in this country, all you need to do is pump this food into the market. You don't feed people because people starve because there's no food in the market. Pump this food into the market, make it easier, and I mean establishing what is called a food fund to help the vulnerable, getting the animals and all those things, etc, etc, to continue. And then big pans and wares everywhere, small ones, as they do in the United States. You know, you know in the U.S. says the water system is not national. Water system is constrained to a small place. Every town has its own water tank. In Yandikwa, you know, uh, Koenange land, you know, every, every town has its own electricity production. Mm -hmm. That's how we're doing it. Tell me something, Governor. Hold on, hold on. Um, th that case in Malawi, Malawi mm. overproduced. They had so much yield that year. Mm. They didn't know how to store that maize. Mm -hmm. They even had to export to Kenya. I don't I'm know, remember. Yes, I remember that. They didn't know how to store the maize. In one year. In one year. So some, some of these solutions are not far off. Yeah, but my question is, you know, you have a very smooth tongue, eh? You have a very smooth, sweet tongue. But what are your chances, honestly? What are your chances of being president of Kenya? Well, you know, when President Obama was running for president, about the, about the same time they were running for president, people dismissed him. They said this tall, lanky, black man uh, with a funny name, Kenyan man, he's actually called Hussein, a Muslim in a Christian country. What are your chances? It's a question actually was asked by a reporter of, I think, one of the main TV stations. What are the chances? We are all born of children of God. There is no saying that only one person or two people can become the president of this country. We have started the journey. Watch this space, Jeff. Watch this space. You yeah. said there's only two horses in this race, and you know I'm not uh, I'm not discarding you or anything, but you know they say, do you have the money to go all the way to August? It yes. takes a lot of money. The money, money and, but also, and also the manipulation tactics. Yes, but also well, we think these tactics are coming from where we also have brains. What <laughs> 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 you know, you know, you yes, and, and let me tell you, there's money. There's always money. You know, when President Obama began, while you are not a pesa, you're not a business owner. Where are you getting the money from? You know, so he, you did, he, did, he did proper fundraising. We have fundraising. We've got people who support us. Mm -hmm. There are people who believe in us. There are people who say it is time for change. It is time for generational handover. It is time to give somebody who, when they are young, they have the energy to lead this country to the next front. Because majority of people are young. Why should we just stay here on this system of Ukabila? You know, these tribal blocks. You know, I don't know, Jeff. You sent a postcard to be born a Kikuyu? No, Did you say the postcard need to be born a Luo? And I was not about, you know, you guys are working together, does it matter? And I tell people this. He, Kasumba Ukabila Kwa Siasa, is actually very regressive. Kenya is in the ICU. We need a doctor who can remove it from the ICU to the general world, to the streets, to play and laugh with the rest of the world. It's not about tribes. So this cocoon of tribalism that is put, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a control mechanism that has been set up by the political elite to control the rest of us, Ukabila. 
as if it matters. Majority of Kenyans right now are the young. They are less tribal than the parents. They don't care about tribalism. Mm. They are dating across the board, they are meeting across the board. Wanaomoka wote, nasema vijana tuomoke, kila mtu wanaomoka pamoja. So nobody cares about tribe. So it's all about getting the message to young people. They are smart to know that it is our time to change. This is a revolutionary manifesto. We need a revolution in this country to take us from that uh, dogma of of tribalism and poverty that has been instraining us to free us so we can be able to march forth and get what is ours you know you're saying the very same thing that um uda is saying uh you know the hustler nation has really uh, overtaken events can you beat William Samoy Arab Ruto because you'd be up against him. Yes. He's the, he's the front runner right now. Yeah, well, I'll beat him. I'm very confident. You know, you don't enter a race thinking that you're only doing Nahaza and Taiza. You, you enter a race knowing that you're beat him. They're very worried. Who's uh, worried? Ah, uh, the UDA camp. How? Worried. You know, you, you know, you monitor these things. And I have experts who are monitoring these things. You look at the comments, you look at how they're reacting to even manifesto and others. You can see they're worried. Because you do a calculation in this country and you look at who can actually defeat William Ruto, who can actually lead this country, who can actually throw a span into the works. It's Alfred Mutua. Because people need a fresh voice. People are tired. Some of these people have been uh, running for politics from the day, days of Moi. They were in political machinations before mobile phones were invented, you know, before they were being used. It is time for us to say enough is enough. This country is not only for the rich. This country is not only for the privileged. We need to widen the base. Sasa ni wakatu wa sauti ya vijana na wanyonge. It is time for all of us to say, this is our nation, let's enjoy it. Let's build a middle class, like what Bill Clinton was talking about. I need to bring back hope, and I want to bring back hope to the people to know that you can dream, and you can make your dreams come true. You know, frustrations are a big problem. You don't know the problems that people face in this country. You know, you find young people, for example, are frustration, uh, frustrated because they don't have IDs. I'm giving a very simple solution. You know, when children are born, they should get registered and get their birth certificate within a month when you're born. You know, within, after a couple of years, you get a certificate, you certificate, you get a notice, you get your birth certificate. Like they do in other, in the US, if you're born, you get your social security number within two days. Now I'm saying when kids are 17 years old, young men and women in school, 17 years old, when you hit 17, you fill a form. Your headmaster, you fill form, you write documents, they start processing your ID, your passport, your all your documents that you need, your NHIF, your PIN number, everything. A month after you turn 18 year old, you pay your passport, you pay your ID, you're giving your documents, you can walk out of that school and get into employment, get into the system. <laughs> so, and then also, I went to Rwanda. You've been to Rwanda? Mm, many times. And I tried. You register a company in Rwanda. Registration of a company. Limited company. Mm. Takes you six hours maximum. You do it online and it's free of charge. Load the documents. It's approved. You get a PIN number. You get everything. Six hours. In Kenya, it takes you how long? Oh, mm. forever. You know, and it's openly free. Young people can get into business. Within, within 12 hours, you can actually open a shop. All documents there. And you continue with your biashara. Because the work of business, the work of government is not to frustrate business, but to facilitate business. In Kenya, I'm going to mandate it is done in four hours. One stop shop. Tuacha na hii bureaucracy tukonayo kila mahali. Kenya is a country of bureaucracy. Kila kitu, goja, kuja, kesho. Remove this bureaucracy, let people make money. That's widening the base. To run a government, and to be able to change this country, you have to know what to tweak. It's not just about telling people, oh, mutapata hii, mutapata hii, mutapanda. No, you have to be able to change the system so that it works for the people, not works just for the elite. Works for the people. Uh, you've spoken about the youth, what they are going through, mm. and uh, you've mentioned uh, a man is a uh, thing trending online. When people come together and start a relationship and get married. Mm. 500,000 to each and every one of them. To a million. All the way to a million mm. at 5% interest over 20 years. I did the math and in the interest would be like, what, 50? Uh, it's 2%. Mm -hmm. Maximum 2%. How is that going to work? How because realistic is that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, very Most of them go no business. Mm -hmm. They don't have any business idea. Mm. They're already starting, uh, they're doing their wedding based on, you know, putting money here and there. What makes you feel like they're going to use this money? If at all, it's going to be there. And where See, is it from? this money is for owning a home. This is under the College of Law. It's about owning a home. Mm -hmm. As a family unit, 
there's nothing as important as owning a home. Once you get married, and this is not a concept that, you know, this is what happens in Singapore. It's what happens in South Korea. This is not something that has not been tried elsewhere and worked. It is what revolutionized Japan, where every family you get married, you start with a home. You're not renting to your home. And it's a mortgage system. So the government basically is loaning you because you may not have a surety, you may not have that. You can get a loan, you can get 30% chini kwanza. Weka ikidogo, you get a mortgage and everything and all these things. So the government is saying, we will come up for it. It's like a circle. Up front, you get married, you want a home, we'll loan you some money, you pay slowly over so many years, you can top up with other loans and buy a home, a small home, for you to start your family in your own home regardless of where you are, as long as you have a small income that is coming in over the years and your children can inherit those homes. It's a system actually that was there a long time. If you can release numbers of Jericho, of Jericho, Razingine, all these things, this is not new. You know, they say when they set up the gay estate and all those, these are concepts that were there in the 1970s that were copied by Singapore in the Tiger economies and they went and did it in their country and here, tukarudi kwa nchi ya matajiri na maskini wanakaa kiolela olela. So these are not new concepts. It's about lifting the family. If you ask your parents, you know, who lived in the 1670s, these are the concepts. You are, you, you get married, you, you are a Kenyan, you can actually go and get mortgage support as a result of getting married, not just the rich. A lot of young people right here, especially on Twitter, they, they want to get married immediately. They, 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 they can't wait to get married. So what happens but, if but they marry the divorce? They, 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 is that what there be a system to... No, no, but you see, the house, uh, a home is a home. You decide, you know, a home is a home. And the concept behind it is a home for every family. Let's protect the family unit. Let children grow up in their own home. See, kwa mahama usiku, you know, unawana mtu wa mahama usiku, mwishu wa mwezi, ajalipa rent mezi mitatu, you know. Deal, deal with it. And the state will be able to cushion. And this is a concept that actually happened in South Africa. You remember when Mandela came in, uh, transforming Alexandria, uh, Kailich slums, Soweto. What do they do? They actually went and told, gave family units money as a government to support them. And what has happened in South Africa? It has brought people more into the middle class system. So these concepts are not new. It's only that they are new to Kenya because Kenyans have never been introduced to concepts that help everybody. They only introduced to concepts that only help a few people as the rest of us suffer and serve the rich. Now how are you going to create 5 million new jobs in three years? Ah, it's very easy. We are looking at manufacturing. A lot of these initiatives that are doing are all adding jobs. Look at manufacturing, for example. Um, you know, I, I was looking at, uh, and Jeff, forgive me, but uh, for a moment there when you were taking photos, I thought you were Chinese. Uh, because I looked at your shoes, they're made in China, your pants are made in China, your shirt, your very beautiful blue shirt is made in China. Mm. I see you're holding a Chinese pen, the microphone you're using is made in China, the headphones are made in China, I believe even your underwear was made in China. <laughs> so, you know, uh, in the ask you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, you're basically Chinese, you know. Yeah. Uh, why? Because China realized the concept of, in China you go, there's basically a, uh, a factory in every village. They produce for the rest of the world. They manufacture for the rest of the world. Why is it that we're importing things all the way from China to use in Kenya today? Why can't we manufacture for the rest of Africa? It's cheaper for us to manufacture goods here, cups, plastics, everything, for the rest of Africa. To go to Angola, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, all these countries, it's cheaper for them and everything. Let's get into manufacturing mode. So I'm, I'm, my manifesto is saying that we're going to have a factory in every constituency to start with. You start with a business park. You know, when I initially make it easier, warehouses, everything, water, everything, people come in and plug and play. And government puts its money. I've costed it 252 billion shillings over two years. We can afford it. You and all this money is available. The money is available. It's all about how you budget and you stop, you cut out the flock of me. So that will provide automatically about 2 million jobs. The agriculture sector, we are going into value addition. Why should we ship things out of this country and then they are shipped back to us to buy? Nujinga kabisa. Why can't we make the things here and let them buy them already packaged from Kenya? We are here to the qualities. So I want Kenya to be a manufacturing country. The country that manufactures for the rest of Africa. We are saying the motor vehicles should be assembled here. You know, come on, take a guy who's in Kenya, we assemble them here in this country. Let's make the spare parts for vehicles in this country. Already they're doing that for some. Yeah, we're doing that, but let's broaden it. Okay. Let's bring the village, let's let's get everything, you know, happening in a wider manner. You're saying exactly the same thing Jubilee said over the last 10 years, and look what happened. No, what did they say exactly? They said they were going to create 10 million jobs. Yes, but what, how did they, what happened to them? Because they came up with what's called the digital era. I always joke and I always say, uh, you know, the Jubilee government 
has been the most fair government ever. How now, Baguzi? Because whether you voted for Jubilee or you do not vote for Jubilee, unaumia. <laughs> you know you are suffering. That's the, yeah, that's, you are suffering. That's yeah. the fairness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thrown around of, of well, suffering. You for them, well, everybody is suffering. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because they, they, you see, the, the problem with, with Jubilee is that um, the marriage, the political marriage between President Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto was not based on an ideology. It was based on survival. It was based on let's get together, save our skins and be able to move. So it was not based on a strong ideology. I come with an ideology of Mandeleo Chap Chap, an economic base of consumer spending that says it is time to widen the base. So mine has uh, a premise, and I'm coming here also with an experience of having worked for one of the best presidents we ever had in this country called Mwai Kibaki in terms of economic revolution and changing the lives of our people. So the things I've put, I could have put so many things, but I've constrained myself to things that I think that I know are workable over a period of time that the government can tweak because all the government needs to do is to tweak 20%. The country will do the rest. Take care of the 20%. The rest will be done by the private sector and others. You know, as, uh, as campaigns approach, everyone has in their manifesto something that talks to the masses. So mm -hmm. if it's youth, there's something for youth. Mm -hmm. Then there's teachers and then there's police. You know, those combined is like, what, four or five million votes? So now I've seen you said uh, security. Mm. Police pay will go up. Uh, the security guards pay will go up. How? Because every year the police keep on being promised. Like last year, I think it was the, they got an increment. Then some people it was slashed again. Mm -hmm. You see, the problem is that uh, nobody has ever really taken seriously policing. Seriously, Kabisa. Um, President Uru Kenyatta has, has really tried. Uh, now we are at uh, one to six hundred, one person to six hundred police officers. Uh, but the international rate is one to four hundred fifty. Never. Be, and I tell you this: if you go to all our counties and you talk to these county commanders, what are you mafuta? Magari ana mafuta. Ukipiga ana mafuta. Why? And there's money in the exchequer. It's all bureaucracy that we've put here. Document this, memo here, approve here, and all this. Because we don't take it seriously. I mean, Kenyan police walk around with all this, and they don't wear bulletproof vests. How much is a bulletproof vest in comparison to a human life? We just throw a police who in a bunduki, hana yana vest, hana at a radio. How, we can afford to buy mobile phones. You know, a radio set today for the police is cheaper than a normal mobile phone, my friend. Mm. Yeah. They have come down. You can equip all the police officers in this country with a phone. And then we say, let them also have a decent wage so they can also take care of their families. When they're out there, they are not also thinking how to make extra money. A basic pay for all police officers of minimum of 50,000 shillings. They're putting your li their lives in danger for you. So you have to consider what is the danger. You know, Melala, Umengorota, Waizi Wanakuja, they are shooting at you. Who do you call? You call the cops. Who is being shot at? At the police. No, I'm part of 16,000 basic pay. Would you agree to be someone's running mate? Um, I don't have experience being running mate, but there are other people who have been running mates, uh, who have been deputies. Maybe they can be my running mate. Okay. But, uh, you know, it's in, in this world of politics, you also have to be able to, to work with other people. You cannot say, I know it all that uh, I'm the only one, you know what I mean? Mm. You have to be able to say, I can work with so-and-so, but it has to be somebody whose ideologies are meshed with mine, people who really care about this country, and who can say that we need to change how things are done in this country for our people during our generation. And let me give you, ask me about jobs, eh? You know, infrastructure is very important. And to, to bring a sense of equality in this country, I'm proposing that I build 50 kilometers of tarmac road in every constituency so that we can open up the the region but also provide employment you remember the gi bill in the u.s in the 1850s that's what they did build infrastructure but for the super highways i like to connect this country north south east west i like to have railway lines that they have in uh, in italy i have all these all these things you see on tv abroad but how do you do it you don't use your money Use other people's money. Who is going to invest in this country when they say Kenya is one of the most corrupt countries on the planet? Who's going to invest? Ah, they'll come. People are coming. You know, the problem in this country is that we frustrate business. Do you know to register a company uh, from international to actually set up a factory in a country like Rwanda, for example, or even South Africa? It takes you, what, a month? <laughs> Maximum six months you're operating. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, just to get the registration, to transfer pesa kuja hapa kila kitu, it's about 18 months. Who will come to this country and wait for 18 months, 20 months? People ask me, Mutua, oh, you're talking about these things. What happened to the new city in Machakos? 
you came up with the concept of new city you brought investors yes i signed in investors 2.8 trillion kenya shillings more than the budget of kenya at the time to invest in machakos i brought in mohammed alabar the guy who built bush khalifa you know the guy of Omar who built dubai mall he came to machakos sat in my office we sat in the people's park he met president uru kinyata he committed to invest 400 million dollars to put up a big mall in Machakos and do the highways like they do in Dubai. Very excited, even sent experts. People came, did soil sample, everything. We got the guy who did uh, this Neso company, you know, this Neso Foods, you know, Neso Foods, came to Machakos. You know, actually that one, uh, I, was, I was called by President Uru Kenyatta. Uh, he hooked me up with that guy. Guys of Ashok Leyland who make all these cars. We had people coming from Japan for medical tourism. All those things. Land, National Land Commission approved everything. What happened? Bad politics. Kalonzo Musoka's party, wiper. Sponsored Mudama, they went to court. An injunction was put. You can't give free land. What's the end? The case stayed in court for nearly six years. We couldn't move. We couldn't start anything. Why? Because they're afraid Mutua will build the new city, he'll become powerful. But I'm building millions of jobs. That is the mentality, and these are the people we call leaders, who do not think that these are jobs that are being created and the economy being grown for our people. Mm. So now, by the time we got the, uh, the, the court was thrown out of court, because our court system is very slow, when it was thrown out, uh, Mohamed Albar told me, I'm sorry, I split my money to Uganda and Angola. He's built everything in Angola. You know, you, the, the people, Neso Foods, were in Egypt, Ashok Leyland, Wakanda, South Africa. People put their money elsewhere because they're not going to wait for the stupidity of Kenyans to sort yourselves out, uh, whereas the rest of the world is crying for money. And you, still crying be, for, and you still want to be president? Yes. You still think you can because, fix this? Yeah, because somebody has to fix this. Would you be because if, if we just let the people who have been controlling us for all those times control, continue controlling us and playing the tribal card and uh, with no ideas... You know, yeah. uh, we, we, you know, our children will be speaking the same talk, you know. Would you be willing to call out to these people who have uh, hindered the growth? Because, you know, now, like, some of this information is coming to us for the first time. Mm. You know, like that park and then the, the injunctions. Yeah. I know the Monainchi at home, they see what's on paper, but they don't know who's behind the scenes trying yes, to yes. kill the dream. It's all these uh, so-called politicians who are there. These people who copy, you know, in my manifesto I told them, please don't copy. You know, because these people nafanya kitu wanafanya, mm. wanaiba. Mm. Nambia come up with their own original ideas. This manifesto has come out, out of deep thought and research. We've looked at best practices. We've looked at what they do in Malaysia. We've looked at how it works in Brazil in terms of food. I mean, you talked about Brazil are giving us uh, what? AstraZeneca vaccine now? Mm. Mm -hmm. so Brazil, yeah. you know, Brazil was at the same rate as Kenya when Kenyatta died. Now they're giving us vaccines. You know, Singapore, we went to Malaysia. You know, you go to Malaysia and uh, they have universal health care. And, uh, you know, they were asked, how did you come out with universal health care? They said, oh, we used this. They went to the shelf and pulled a book. Oh, they just said, this is the concept we used. They gave it to us. It was the Kenyan universal health care plan in the 1970s. Never implemented. That's what they came here, copied, used in their country. We are not lacking brains. We are lacking people who can transform brains or ideas into action. And that's why I come in, because I'm a chap chap guy. My job is, let's get things done. Don't just talk about it. Let's get it done. And when when Jeff, we talked about it, you know, talk about Ukambani lacking water, for example. What do I do? You have to be innovative. You have to be creative. That's what I'm saying for the youth, for example. We need recording studios in every county. You know, we need uh, sports academies so we can grow talent that goes all the way up so we can win the World Cup. Uh, are you going to be the beneficiary of the first million? <laughs> You'll have a couple very soon. Watch a vijana to a mocha.